T minus one minute and counting. The Soyuz now on internal power and we have auto sequence start. Vehicle to internal power. So at T minus 35 seconds, the first umbilical tower has separated from the booster. That second tower will go at about 15 seconds away from launch. We're at 24 and counting now. The ground umbilical to the third stage has been disconnected. Auto sequence initiated. Second umbilical tower now separating. Boosters igniting, the engines firing. Ramping up to flight speed. And liftoff. Liftoff of Tim Copra, Yuri Malenchenko, and Timothy Peake on their way to the International Space Station. So far, getting good first stage performance. The Soyuz delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single core engine. The first stage of the Soyuz, 68 feet in length, 24 feet in diameter. It's going to be burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of the flight. We'll be getting regular launch performance calls from the uh, engineers out there at the launch pad in Baikonur. 48 seconds and counting after launch. Everything continuing to go well with the first stage of the Soyuz rocket. Yeah, we're receiving data. Chamber pressure nominal. Thirty sixty seconds. Pitch. Now one minutes and ten seconds into the flight, the Soyuz rocket already traveling at a velocity of one thousand one hundred miles per hour. On board Malenchenko, Copra and Peak. Uh, one minute and 22 seconds into their planned eight minute 45 flight into orbit. Everything continuing to go well with the first stage, the four strap on boosters and the core engine performing nominally or normally. 90 seconds, engine stable. And just there we see the four strap-on boosters jettison the first stage uh, and the boot strap-on boosters completing their job, dropping away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. At this point, the Soyuz is traveling at about 3,350 miles per hour. You can see the four strap-on boosters uh, all separated from the Soyuz successfully, that core stage continuing to fire. Second stage will continue until about four minutes, 43 seconds into the flight, at which point it will shut down shortly after the third stage ignites. And then uh, shortly we should get confirmation that the launch shroud has been jettisoned. We can see that the fairing has been jettisoned. And confirm the launch shroud uh, protecting the Soyuz during the initial ascent has been jettisoned. The rocket now at an altitude of over 48 miles in height. Copy, we can see that. On board, everything continuing to go well. You can see British astronaut Tim Peake there uh, over in the right seat in the center, Soyuz Commander Yuri Malenchenko. Everything going well for the Soyuz craft as it continues its climb. The Soyuz already traveling at a speed of over 4,700 miles an hour. The thumbs up from peak there and a quick wave. The Soyuz core stage uh, continuing to perform as expected. Uh, the core stage of the Soyuz rocket is uh, 56 feet in length, 13 and a half in diameter, with a single engine and four fuel chambers providing between 178,000 and 222,000 pounds of thrust for its three minutes and 28 seconds of operation.
So again, this stage is going to continue to burn until the 4 minute 43 second mark. The Soyuz then uses what's called a hot stage technique. Uh, the third stage will ignite while the second's still burning. Uh, this is why you, if you ever look at a Soyuz, it has the small open area between the second and third stages. Copy, I got, I got it. So in just about 10 seconds, we'll be standing by for the third stage to ignite and the second stage to shut down. Third stage activation confirmed. I got the two Copy. And second stage separation confirmed. Third stage now igniting. The core booster separating at an altitude of 105 statute miles. Soyuz craft now being propelled by the single engine of the Soyuz's third stage. The engine provides 67,000 pounds of thrust and will burn for four minutes and two seconds. 320 seconds, flight nominal. Copy. And this right here, actually a, uh, a view from the International Space Station, getting an unprecedented view of the Soyuz as it makes its flight into orbit. Copy. Currently six minutes since, since liftoff. Copra, Malenchenko, and Peak inside the Soyuz currently traveling on top of the third stage, which again uh, burns for a total of four minutes and two seconds. Three hundred and eighty seconds. Stage shut down. Three hundred and eighty seconds. Stage three engine is stable. Copy. The third stage will continue burning for about another two minutes or so. Uh, until it cuts off and separates and then places the Soyuz craft into its preliminary orbit. Four hundred and ten seconds nominal. Copy Agate. Forty seconds. Attitude stable. Copy. So coming up on seven minutes thirty seconds post launch, the vehicle's velocity now at almost thirteen thousand five hundred miles an hour. Once the third stage delivers the Soyuz into orbit, uh, the module gets separated. A series of uh, pre-programmed commands will execute in order to prepare the Soyuz for orbital operations. All these stored commands, uh, called time-tagged commands, allow many of the Soyuz's systems to be automatically activated by onboard computers at very precise time stored inside of those computers. Again, over eight minutes now since liftoff, about 45 seconds remaining on the third stage operations. Once that's finished, they'll be in their preliminary orbit, and the uh, vehicle will uh, command the deployment of antennas and the solar array, and will be in an, uh, its initial altitude. Again, everything continuing to go well with all three stages of the rocket today. All nominal. Five hundred and ten seconds. Uh, pitch your and roll nominal. Now standing by for third stage cutoff and separation. And you can uh, see the 
small jolt there for the crew members as the third stage cuts off and separates. Uh, the single liquid fueled engine shut down and dropping away at an altitude of about 125 statute miles. Uh, the third stage performs an avoidance maneuver by opening a valve in its liquid oxygen tank to steer well clear of the Soyuz spacecraft. Unintelligible. And so hearing confirmation of spacecraft set, uh, the Soyuz capsule and the crew now safely in orbit, uh, executed all of those pre-programmed commands, hearing uh, the deployment of antennas and solar arrays went as planned. Soyuz orbiting at an altitude of about 143 by 118 miles. This orbit's going to be raised systematically over the course of the next six hours, placing it in close proximity to the International Space Station. And control from uh, here on out will be overseen by the Russian Mission Control Center just outside of Moscow. Uh, expecting that. So again, we did get confirmation. All of the antennas and solar arrays have been deployed. Uh, the Soyuz craft now in its preliminary orbit. Yuri Malenchenko, Tim Copra, and uh, Tim Peake from the European Space Agency now in space on their way towards the International Space Station. Again, they're at their initial altitude right now of about 143 by 118 miles. That orbit going to be raised uh, with a series of burns over the next six hours uh, as they chase down uh, the International Space Station, uh, slated for a docking a little bit later this morning central time. But everything going flawlessly with the uh, liftoff, which happened right on time at 5.03 a.m. Central Time this morning, 6.03 a.m. Eastern, 5.03 p.m. over there in Baikonur. Uh, picture, copy. Getting video uh, from the command panel of the vehicle itself. Again, all of this being done while the Soyuz craft is still over those Russian ground sites. Uh, it'll pass out of range. Uh, in just a couple of minutes, so doing all these initial uh, power-ups and checkouts, uh, all the solar arrays and antennas reported uh, to be deployed um, without any issue. The Soyuz craft in uh, good health and already uh, in orbit uh, in just a couple of hours arriving at the International Space Station. So a flawless flight uh, up into orbit today. Uh, one new space flyer, uh, Tim Peake, the rookie, uh, making his first trip into space. Uh, alongside two veteran crew, mem crew members, Yuri Malenchenko and Tim Copra. I got it. Unintelligible. <laughs> 